Welcome to DiverTin.com. All right, today we're going to take a look at Escape Motion's Rebel 1.1. This is a revisiting of my Rebel video I had done previously for the Surface Pro 3. So once again, I'm using my Surface Pro 3, and we're going to uh, look at 1.1. 1.1 came out pretty much as soon as I published my, my previous video. And the nice thing about 1.1 uh, is, well, this video pretty much... Uh, I've gotten more familiar with the program, so I can talk a little bit better about some of the tools. And I made some mistakes in the previous video, which I hope to correct with this one. So looking at the at the, the website, uh, Frisky Emotions website, we can see that 1.1 is here, and they talk about some of the, uh, the changes. One of the nice changes they did here, as you can see from this, this uh, area here, is that they've... Uh, made the UI adaptive so that it scales better for machines like the Surface Pro 3. Because if you saw my previous video, I kind of made comment to the fact that the menu options were awfully tiny because of, of the high resolution display on the Surface Pro 3. And this has been addressed with 1.1. Other features are stuff like the show and hide panels with the tab key. There's this uh, mention of here for the this uh, mixed color mode, which is really kind of cool. I'll show that. And uh, I've actually gotten more familiar with some of the, the tools for watercolors and, and the wet-dry type of stuff, and I'll talk about that as well. So I hope to clear some of the misconceptions or some of the mistakes I made in the previous video. So, all right, go back here. We'll launch Rebel. And as you can see here, so quickly we can see that, uh, indeed, the UI is scaled a lot more, so they're actually normal sized, which is kind of nice. And then, of course, in the tab key, my keyboard, I can simply, I can easily hide and show the panels, which is a real welcome uh, change. So that, that's kind of a nice thing, as well as the uh, paper. So in my previous video, something was wrong with my uh, my settings for some reason. Uh, my program installation kind of messed up somehow, and I was lacking all these colors that you can choose for your for your canvas now and so I also had less canvas options I think so uh, with 1.1 and reinstallation of the new program uh, it seems to have addressed those things all right so uh, instead of watching me blindly doodle and nonsense on, on uh, the page I'm gonna go and actually take a picture of something and we'll use that instead so the camera and I have a handy dandy coloring book that's been lying around my house for a while and we'll go and well, let's see how about this one over here so we'll so, so pardon the poor lighting that i have over my tablet but we'll just take this picture of rapunzel from tangled all right looks pretty good so we will now close out of this go back to rebel here and i'm going to import this photo so there we go i'm going to file import so nice, nice thing about the menus being a little bit bigger i can tap these easier now which is nice and let's see, was this the one I was taking pictures of? Yep, there we go. So I'll open this guy up. And so we're going to scale this because I want to get that horrible shadow out of the way because I don't want that shadow in there. So I'm going to... I wish, this, I wish the handles were a little bit bigger. Uh, but there we go. So there we go. So there we are. So and I'm going to OK this there so now I have another layer on top and what I can do is I can turn turn uh, blend uh, multiply on and that kind of shows you can see that it shows the, the canvas kind of bleeds through the bottom so it becomes a little layer on top now ideally uh, I would want this to be white or what one thing you can do is you can trace it um, and then yeah you know, well actually let's, let's go and do that then <laughs> might as well do that while we're talking uh, so I will go and use a uh, nice little black color which use the pencil here I'll zoom in and this way. So so something you can do and something you can also do is if if you have Photoshop or another program you can actually, you know, uh, make the layers trans transparent as far as like getting rid of the gray color or you know, have better lighting for photo instead of what I did but you know for, for this example we'll just kind of just quickly just trace through here and just kinda, so you can get an idea for some of the new features of the program and not to worry about you know, looking at my funny scribbles or or lack of artistry thereof so all right so you see that there's my 
my layer. Oh, how about I put her eyes in? That'd be kind of nice, huh? All right, let's do that. All right, and your nostril there. All right, so and what I can do now is I can make a new layer below this one. And we can go and start putting some color down. So I can also lower the opacity of this guy so it's not so much in the, so in the way. Uh, wow, she has no pupils. Oh, that's not bad. That's not good. Let's see. Let's see. Where's that one? There it is. Okay, I want to move this one down. I want it below this, the, the line art. If I can do that. There we go. Wait, did I do that, did that wrong? All right, we go. All right, there we go. That's what I want. All right, so I will throw some pupils in here. How's that sound? There we go. All right. So what I can do with this, I can lower the opacity down, so it's not so so much in, in, in the way. And now with this bottom layer, I'm gonna start putting some color down. So how about some, some maybe like a fleshy tone? I use the watercolors, and I'm going to make it a little bit more wet, and let's just kind of apply color throughout here. We'll do some cleanup after the fact. So there's a darker skinned Rapunzel. So now one thing they might they see is that uh, as I kind of go through here and kind of color it in, the you see the see the kind of spread a little bit. Now if I click on this little button here, it shows this is the show wet operation. You see that this is blue. This kind of shows how wet the area is, and being wet will allow me to blend the colors in. Uh, so that's something that's, that's a very important feature in the program is to be able to understand how that interaction plays out. So if I were to say choose a darker color, like this brown color, get some some maybe flush flush tones in here, some darker colors, so maybe some shadowy around the here. See how how it blends and blows out just because this whole area is wet, and so it doesn't so it doesn't have much of an impact because it just kind of got blended out through all all of it. But what I can do then is I, I can use this option here to to, to dry. So I can dry it. So boom, hit this down. Now it's gray, which is dry. So now if I go back and do the same type of thing, and I can put this down, and you see that it didn't ble bleed in as much. Now of course I have a, I, I, you know, ideally want to size the brush a little bit better than I have, but you can see now that I uh, that I can kind of go in this way, and it's kind of a, uh, it doesn't have that same type of issue now. So it doesn't blow away and doesn't 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 absorb into the rest of the drawing as much as it did before. So that's kind of an interesting way to look at it. Now you see here, when I go back into the wet view, see there's wet here, wet here, wet here. And so, you know, it shows well, where the wet spots are, which is kind of nice. And then once again, I can dry it, this button here, now it's all dry. So I go back and, and you know, I could fix things obviously with the blend tool, kind of, kind of get that hardening out. You know, kind of work, work it way out uh, and then go say like let's get to work with the hair for example and I saw a yellow color somewhere so I'll just choose this color and make it like more of a yellowish color and we'll just kind of grab the watercolor again and we'll make the little show bigger and just kind of go through and slather the the color on and so as throughout you see that so through here, see how 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 the wetness itself is, and I can I can show here. It shows blue. Of course, I'm I'm doing. I actually am using yellow, but you can see how how the, the water and the wetness of the color is expanding out as it absorbs into the canvas. Really, really, really cool. No, no program I've seen actually does this. It's really kind of neat. And um, so then now I can. The interesting thing is I use that if I hold the X key down, I get this uh, mode mixed mode brush. So I can have this color here and click here and see and kind of grab some additional colors and then get the color up on top is it's kind of the the color I'm kind of getting to, and uh, that's a, that's a really kind of a neat feature to have. Of course, not doesn't have much impact when the colors I'm using are very similar to each other, so it's kind of kind of kind of a, a moot point. But let's see, this is uh, shows the shows the, the brush down a little bit. So and everything's still wet, see. So everything, see how it's all getting dissipated in, into itself. So it's, it's probably not, not. If I want to shade, it's probably not the most ideal thing. Not, not the way uh, how wet this whole thing is. So what I can do is I can just once again dry it instantly. Just cool, and then, then I can actually make it a little bit wet if I want some wetness, not as much wetness. And so what I do is I add some wetness, wet spots there. And so now what I can do is I can go back and go back to the brush, and I can once again. Well, it might be too wet still. 
but you can see that being wet, it's dissipating in. And at a certain point, I can just dry it. I don't have to worry about it anymore. So I dried it. So if I want the dissipation to stop, I can actually just manually go ahead and do that, which is kind of cool. So I'll go over the use the eraser tool now and kind of you know, choose different size and kind of clean out this mess over here I made. Yeah, I just gotta clean up, clean things up a little bit over here, so I get the lines going. So the interesting thing about the eraser too is the eraser doesn't isn't as as a blunt just erase everything. It kind of it treats my pressure and actually kind of reveals a little bit of the, of the canvas below it, which is kind of nice. So even with this one, for example, if I wanted to, uh, I, you can see the grain coming through as I erase. So the grain of the of the of the canvas is coming through. So it's not quite a harsh erase and just go back to white. It actually shows the the canvas below it. It's really kind of nice. You can get some really cool features and effects with that. So, uh, so yeah, so that, that that's kind of a, a quick view of how using the, the wet and dry tools are. It's something very important and something I didn't quite uh, understand properly when I did my previous video. So uh, hopefully this kind of shows that. Now of course if I hit tab I can get the, uni the interface away and using my my pen's topmost button I can actually pan around using plus or minus keys on the keyboard to zoom in. I'll tell you though, when it, when they put touch uh, features in here, it'll be great because uh, it'd, be, it'd be nice to not have to worry about using a keyboard. So I look forward to to that type of interaction when it becomes available. Uh, oh, something I didn't really explain here uh, that I thought was really kind of cool. I, I didn't know what the what this tilt thing did, but it's really a neat feature. So right now you can see there's no no tilting it whatsoever. And so if I were to pick some color like blue here, for example, I make a new layer so I don't mess up the one I'm working on now, and I just slather on a color or make a big big uh big brush here just slather it on and you can see how it spreads over here all right now if i use a tilt tool for example and i just kind of drag it out like this or even from here just drag it out and i say i want the direction you see oh you see it's uh, because i'm still wet i have the, i have it such a such a severe degree of tilt that and my media is wet that it's actually still it's going to run it's kind of cool. So if I wet, wet it some more, you see I put more water around, and look at that. It's just kind of bleeding down the the edge of the page. So the so the, the darker the the darker the color of the line here, and the case the severity of the of of the page tilt, and that's pretty much like a vertical at this point. And I can vary it, and you'll see that the speed will change because of the tilt. It's really kind of a neat feature. Um, that's really kind of neat. I don't think I've seen anything that, once again, I don't see anything that has done something like this before. So it's really kind of a cool feature. So once again, if I could pick a nice little blobby color here, kind of move that in. And you notice the tilt's strong like this. I can tilt it back up on itself. So that's a really neat feature. And so you notice how it actually picked up a lot of colors that was on. So it kind of blurred itself into the colors that were there. And obviously, if you look at the wet layer, you'll see how, how, you know, the interaction is. It is incredibly cool. So, that's what I wanted to show. I wanted to make some of those corrections in this video. Show a little bit more of some of the things you can do, like with my Surface Pro 3, by taking a picture of a coloring book and do some tracing on it. Uh, and then just, lay, you know, play with the layers a little bit. Show the wet layers. Uh, the, basically, the, the, the wetting. Oh, this, this actually is interesting. This uh, will wet the entire canvas. Now, so, that's a whole other thing you can play with. And the immediate dry. So, there you have it. A look at Rebel 1.1, uh, and and the fact that I'm a little more familiar with the tool now. Uh, this is actually quite a really fun program uh, to play with. Uh, I highly recommend you give it a shot. Uh, and it's a nice tool to, uh, amongst any other tools you have in your arsenal, uh, especially for those like well, I like to work with natural media and watercolor in particular. This is really kind of a fun thing. I've always liked watercolor. I've never quite gotten good with. Uh, well, I'm honest, I never got good at all using watercolor in real media. But the nice thing about this is being on digital canvas. There's no commitment of ruining anything, and you can always use the eraser tools. So this is kind of a really fun thing to play with. So if you have any questions about this video, or anything I've done here, or Surface Pro 3, uh, or anything with the with the S Pen, uh, you know, if there's any questions you have about that, let me know. Subscribe.